Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling. In this session of the video, we're actually going to talk about the glycolysis. You must be wondering the glycolysis is a very hard topic or really bad to understand. But to be honest, it's very easy because this guy is only based on 10 step reactions. 10 step reactions, which means it uses only 10 enzymes from starting from the glucose till we get this guy called pyruvate so glycolysis is very much easy so starting with the glycolysis i must cover up a little, little bit basic like what will be what we'll be getting at the end of the glycolysis or what is glycolysis and all that thing right so i'll be using this paper to explain it all so glycolysis is actually nothing just a greek word which means uh, the glyco, glyco which means your glyco means sweet and your lysis means I mean when I put the word lysis which means splitting so we are actually splitting your glucose which is actually your six carbon molecule so your glucose is your six carbon molecule we are going to split this guy and break it down to two molecules of pyruvate pyruvate which each uh, like two molecules of pyruvate each contain three carbons so we do uh, we are going to break this that glucose into two pyruvate molecules by using 10 step reaction which means we are using 10 enzymes all right so the glycolysis is also called as if somebody's asking what is glycolysis also called so you will be saying em em pathway right em pathway why we call it em pathway uh, that means emden mayer hoff pathway which who is the scientist who discovered it or whatever that kind of reason so now let's move uh, further so if you are going to if you if you need an explanation regarding glycolysis so you will be saying it can be explained or defined as a, as a sequence of reaction you can see it's a sequence of reaction for break breakdown of glucose which is a six carbon molecules to two molecule of pyruvic acid we're actually getting two molecules of pyruvic acid in addition to two molecules of pyruvic acid what we are actually getting so if somebody is asking you we are breaking down the glucose what we are actually getting we are actually getting two pyruvate molecule pyruvate molecule two atps final product and two nadh all right so these guys we get these guys from the glycolysis so what happens uh, we uh, the glycolysis actually occurs in this uh, one thing more you have to remember the glycolysis actually occur in the cytoplasm so that is a major point to remember regarding your mcqs and there are two types of glycolysis remember this shit and that is the aerobic aerobic and that another one is the anaerobic right so this one uses the oxygen the aerobic one and anaerobic one does not use your oxygen so it is does not use your oxygen and furthermore we have divided we have furthermore we divided the glycolysis into two phases so i think it is getting complicated no it's not getting too much complicated but uh, i have to explain the phases what is phases so if, you, if somebody is asking you uh, what is phases like how many phases of the glycolysis there are two phases of the glycolysis one is called the pre Preparatory phase or glucose activation phase. Let me write it down for you. The first phase is called like two phases of glycolysis. Number one is the preparatory phase, and number second is your payoff phase. Like you have to pay off, right? You pay off. So in the preparatory phase, we use two molecules of ATP. Like we give the ATP to break the glucose molecule, right? We give ATP2 molecule to break down the glucose. But in the payoff phase, we get down over ATP. So in the payoff phase, you get your energy back, you get your whole thing back. So what happens in the, so which which uh, which uh, steps are preparatory phase? So remember the first five phases, like half, half. First five, number one, two, three, four, five. Till this, like these all number one, two, three, four, five are actually preparatory phases. Are those phases in which the ATP is invested and uh, uh, in this phase one thing one thing more occurs is that the splitting of the glucose into two molecules so further further on we'll be talking about that and in the payoff phase we're actually getting the ATP NADH and your energy molecules in the payoff phase so from six from six 
seven eight nine ten in this in these steps we are actually getting the energy right so this that's why we call them the payoff phase now let's get to the real work that is the glycolysis reactions so we talked about earlier that there are 10 steps in the glycolysis so the i have wrote them down here so it is easy to talk about them because we we will be remembering the name so what happens we'll be using three things we'll be using this major molecule that is the glucose we got the glucose and we'll be breaking down this glucose and making it into the pyruvate so what happened the first reaction or the first step is the phosphorylation of glucose what does that mean that means we are adding the phosphorus group to the glucose so that's why we call it phosphorylation means addition of phosphate into the glucose so where we are getting the um, phosphate we are getting it from the atp so atp kind of adds up its phosphate and change into adp like its last lo loss is phosphate it, it has given its phosphate to the glucose and the enzyme which is used over here is the hexokinase so glucose converted into the glucose 6 phosphate what does this 6 represent so this 6 represents shows us that the glucose the phosphate group is on the carbon number six we know glucose is a six carbon molecule that's right glucose six carbon molecule on the six carbon we got the phosphate group and down here as we go we have and the second this is the first step which is called the phosphorylation of the glucose but the second step is called the isomerization of the glucose 6 phosphate very simple like we are going to make isomer of glucose 6 phosphate so we know the glucose isomer is the fructose so glucose 6 phosphate isomer would be the fructose 6 Phos uh, phosphate that's why we call the isomerization of glucose 6 phosphate that's the second step so we'll be using the enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase right phospho that is the phosphate glucose that is glucose and isomerase simply because we're using it for the isomerization number three step is very simple again is the phosphorylation of fructose 6 phosphate again the phosphorylation that means we are adding the phosphate so we added the phosphate in first group and we are adding the again into the third step we add the atp atp by using atp we add the phosphate group and atp is converted to atp and phosphate is on the carbon number one right earlier we had on the six carbon now we add another phosphate which is actually attached to the carbon number one so now we have the formula fructose one six bisphosphate this means there are two phos there are two phosphates right all right now we go from the we start from glucose glucose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate added another phosphate group converted into the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate so what we're going to do about the fructose 1 bisphosphate we're going to break it down because this guy is actually still it's a six carbon molecule remember that this guy's fructose is a six carbon molecule so we want to break it down into the three three carbon molecule so it's still this guy is a three because six carbon molecule we want to break it down to three three right so what we're going to do which enzyme we're going to use we're going to use something that breaks it down so what we're going to number five stage would be the number four step would be breaking it down so that would be cleavage cleavage means breaking down of fructose one six bisphosphate like we are going to break this guy so that's why we're gonna we're gonna put the name step four would be cleavage of the fructose one six bisphosphate breaking this boy into two molecules that is the dry hydroxyacetone and the glyce glyceraldehyde three phosphate so these two guys we have broken down break break the actually we broke the fructose into these two molecules so that is over the third step and number step five would be the isomerization of the dihydroxy oxy acetone phosphate so these these two molecules are actually isomerized to each other like we can convert it to this one and we can also convert this one so we will be converting this dihydroxy phosphate into the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by using an enzyme called the triose phosphate isomerase right so if we come to this guy which is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate that is the on the number five step number six step so till here we know this is the phase pre preparatory phase because we have used a lot of energy we have given this guy an energy now we're gonna now we need an energy so the, from here from six till ten these steps are called the post or you can say uh like not, not post like you can say those phases are payoff phases like you get the energy from it now we're going to talk about the sixth reaction which is the oxidate 
phosphorylation of the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate that means this this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is going to be converted into the 1 3 diphosphoglycerate by using an enzyme called glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase whenever you hear the word dehydrogenase which means an NADH molecule is involved in it so we NADH is formed in this reaction by converting the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate into the 1 3 diphosphoglycerate so number 6 step is done now let's move toward the number step number 7 that is the transfer of phosphate from 1,3-diphosphoglycerate to ADP. Like we are taking this boy's, AD, uh, this boy's uh, you know, uh, phosphate and giving it to the ADP. So it is the, we have a uh, molecule is formed, energy molecule is formed that is called ATP. So when we give the, uh, the phosphate molecule, which is removed from the number one carbon from, uh, from this uh, phosphoglycerate molecule, the, we, by using an enzyme called phosphoglycerate kinase, we get we get the three phosphoglycerate by because the uh, the phosphate on number one has been removed or given to the ADP which has been converted to ATP. So now let's move toward the carbon number step number seven. That is the transfer step number six, seven, eight. Number eight. That is the isomerization of three phosphoglycerate. What does that mean? That means the the phosphate which was on carbon number three has been moved to the carbon number two. So that's why over new uh, by that's why we call it isomerization. So that's why the three phosphoglycerate now is called two phosphoglycerate, and that isomerization occurred due to an enzyme called phosphoglycerate. Mutase. So number nine reaction would be the dehydrate dehydration of two phosphoglycerate. What does that mean? We are actually going to remove a water molecule from two phosphoglycerate. So when you are go going to remove a water molecule from two phosphoglycerate by using an enzyme called enolase, the 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 um, the reaction, the step next step or the product we are gonna get is the phospho phosphoenol pyruvate right the phosphoenol pyruvate we get by the dehydration of the two phosphoglycerate by using an enzyme called enolase so by converting the last step over would be the transfer of phosphate from the uh, phosphoenol pyruvate to the atb which means we are removing the phosphate group from this guy and giving to the ADP and this guy ADP is going to be converted into ATP and we get simple pyruvate molecule and the enzyme which is used to convert the phosphophenol pyruvate to pyruvate molecule is called the pyruvate kinase. So finally we get pyruvate. So what is the net gain of the glycolysis like what we gain in the total reaction of glycolysis. So what happens we totally get two molecules of pyruvate because we know the pyruvate is a three carbon molecule so we get two because of the glucose was six so six is divided into two so we get two pyruvate molecule pyruvate molecule and two NADH why we're getting two NADH because here you can see it's this is one NADH but totally there are two because we have two reactions similar reactions going on right this is only one reaction this is a three carbon one reaction if you if you multiply it by two because we have six carbon so we'll get two NADH and we are actually getting the two ATP you will be wondering why two ATP we're actually getting total of two uh, four ATPs you know Two from here because this is a th also a three carbon. This is also three carbon. So two, we are getting two ATP from here and two ATP from here. But the two ATP over two ATPs has been utilized over here. One is over here. One is over here. So that's why our total net gain will be two ATP. But if you are asking only how many ATPs are formed, we would say four ATPs are formed. But but in the reaction, in, in, in before in, in the starting of the glycolysis, uh, the two ATPs were utilized, so net gain will be two ATP. So total over net gain will be two pyruvate molecule, two NADH, and two ATP. That's very simple. I hope I made uh, the glycolysis uh, concept uh, as easy as possible. So please make sure to visit Thai Schooling. Thank you.